Welcome back to the table, everyone. Today, we're going to be doing something here on the channel that we have not done. And this is the first of many videos we're doing yeah. our top 50s. Now, we're not going to do our entire top 50 yeah. in this one video. No, no, no. <laughs> in fact, you don't even have all four of us here. It's yeah. me and Jeremy kicking things off here from 50 to, to 41. 41. Okay. And we're going to do sort of different pairings. It's me and Jeremy you got this time. Maybe Emily and Jeremy, maybe Ryan yeah. and me, whatever. It's going to be all that. And then when we do our top 10, it's going to be the whole game. Are you feeling the pressure? I, I'm feeling pressure. A oh, my gosh. Pressure. I'm feeling a fair amount of pressure. When I went through this list, I've never put together my top 50 before. Yeah. And I kind of put the list together. And then uh, you turned me on. Someone turned me on to Pub Meeple. Yeah. And I went there and did that ranking comparison. If you've never done this, go and check it out because it forces you to, to make some tough two, decisions. Two titles at a time. <laughs> And I put in 88 titles total to get yeah. a ranking, and it was like maybe like three to 400 choices I had yeah. to make between games, and it finally spit something out. And I have to say, I honored that list that it spit out pretty yeah. well. It got really close for me. I mean, after we were done and after I had seen it, I put it in like three times, so I wanted to make sure I was getting to where I was. And like, outside of like a couple titles where I was just like, no, I, this has to be in my top 20, yeah, you know, that kind too. of thing. Like, other than that, like I was, I was good to go. So I think that's a good system. If you ever want to go on there, you build an account, it's free. Uh, if you want to throw them a couple shells, why not do that? Shells, yeah. shells is money. Uh, <laughs> but uh, you can help them out uh, over at pubmeeple.com and they do a really good job. It's got all the BGG stuff. You can even take yeah, you can your import list. It. You can import it from BGG and do it and make it easy on yourself. It just kind of tests yourself. It tells you how many decisions you have. If you're one of those people that plays phone apps, it's just one click, and they just keep going. And you're going through it, and you probably get invested, and you'll find out. Like, yeah, it's pretty good. It forces you to take a little bit of the nostalgia and emotions yep. out of the equation because yeah. it really is just pitting games against each other. Well, but let's put all that aside and get to our top. Yeah, 50. yeah. I've got an eclectic list. Do you have? A pretty... You know what? I'm excited just to share my list because. I don't know if people know what I like, and I, that's why I feel like there's pressure. It's like now you will know yeah. the games that You've put Jeremy it out Howard there. loves. Like this is the games, and now I'm gonna have to answer all these questions, right? Now we're all gonna yeah. have to answer all these questions. Why do you have that over there? Oh my gosh, you know, like that kind of stuff. But I'm ready for all that smoke. Yes. So let's go ahead and do it. Bring let's, on the questions. Yeah, bring on that smoke. Bring on the questions. I'm Jeremy, good. do you want to start at number? 15? I'm gonna start with a weird game. You have no idea what it's called. It's called Bugs on the Rucks. <laughs> I've heard of this game. <laughs> Tell me about Bugs on Rugs. So rugs. I just want to say that I give away five to ten copies of Bugs on Rugs every year. I think it is probably one of the best family games there is that people either talk about or they don't. Uh, it's a just a card drafting game, and it's got different bugs. And the different bugs, uh, they have different like different versions of set collection, and then you also have spiders that eat larvae and all that kind of stuff. So it's got like light science stuff. And the deck of cards, you don't know when the third part ends. You know how they'll have stuff mm -hmm. where it's like the end game card is in there somewhere. So there's that little element in there. And then there's a way that the bugs, when you line them up, they kind of trigger stuff at the end of the like the end of a round. It's just a very fun card game. It's super cheap. It's I mean, it's less than and sometimes it's less than 10 bucks if you can find it on an Amazon sale. And I just like people are looking for those family games, and I'm like, this is a really good starter game for people, but it's actually just a good family game. I love it that our top 50s for the entire channel has yeah. started off with shots bugs, fired, bugs, bugs on rugs. rugs. Okay, so yeah. Uh, <laughs> uh, I've got a very different game. Yeah. My number 50, and I, some people may say this is cheating, it's a bit of a series of games. Okay, you're cheating. Yes. Yeah, I am. I did it too. Uh, it is the Unlock series of games. Okay. It, the Unlock yeah. games are, if you're not familiar, are exit room games effectively. Uh, but the system they have here is just one deck of cards. So a lot of people prefer some of the things like Exit and some of the other ways people have approached these. I like this system a lot because it, it is just one deck of cards. Maybe part of the box, maybe yeah. part of the manual at times, spoiler alert. But you're going through this deck of cards effectively, randomly, because you're kind of flipping something over and someone's looking at it going, oh, okay, here, we need the card 57. So people are all over the place. You can play this with... a varying number of players, but I think it's probably best at three players okay. because otherwise, once you're up over that, people start getting, you know, they're sitting over the table twiddling. Their right, yeah, and that's but always a thing, right? I love exit rooms, and Unlock, I think, is a really great system for doing exit rooms on the tabletop, and when you're done, you can pass it off. You can just give yeah. it to someone else. That's a, that's a, you're never going to play it again. That's a huge, huge feature. I have one of, one of the games in the series of all these games 
uh, that I like or the genre of all these games, and it was called Escape Tales. It's really, really difficult. It's very mathy. Uh, and uh, outside of that, I'm just not really as into them. Into the exit room games. But, uh, you know, I tried a couple with my wife. It just didn't work out. I, I want to try the ones with the advent calendars, though. So I want to give those a chance. The newer ones. with the, I love like, the idea. The puzzle pieces and stuff like that. You know, that kind of for stuff. For me, Unlock is sort of the king of that category. Yeah. What is your 49? 49 is a very interesting uh, thematic type dice uh, game um, that's very thematic. I, I love the theme. Is Title Blades, uh, Title Blades, oh. Heroes of the Reef. This, uh, this the original game, Title Blades. Yeah, the original Title Blades. Now the second one, I'm telling y'all, like if you're in, like if you're kind of digging that world, this that second one is a huge. I'm not going to get very into different that. game, but this is the beginning of that story where you have the Title Blades who are trying to impress. Uh, they're, they're trying to impress this group of people. Meanwhile, there's monsters going on, but they're trying to perform these different types of performances at different spots. And what you're doing is, is taking these dice and you're placing your workers and playing these sort of, they're not games, but you're placing them in certain areas. And you're also trying to get these dice that upgrade along in the game. And I like dicey things. So it's, it's got that thing and I love that, that upgrade system. And I also like this little shell system they have that they use for protection. And you kind of develop the character story just a little tidbit in this game. Yeah. And it just, just a tidbit, but it was something about it that connected with me. And they took it to a whole nother level in the second one, which is like a full-on dungeon crawl slash whatever. But the, it leads into the story, and I'm digging it even more now. So when I think of Title Blades, I really reflected on how much that connected with me. Something very small. Yeah, I enjoyed uh, the yeah. original Title Blades. Yeah. The worker placement is really good. And that dice that you were talking yeah. about, I think the big takeaway for me there is you can mitigate those quite a bit. Yes. It's not just a pure luck fest. There yeah. is some dice rolling involved. But the, the shells you get, shell you're constantly system. able to, yeah. to mitigate that. So, yeah. My number 49 is a game called Ethnos. Have you Ethnos. played Ethnos. No, I have not. Actually, I have not. Actually, I'm going to stop not. the video right I now. Almost, we want to play Ethnos. I, I, I will like this. I sat through some of it, and I didn't really, I'm not going to say I officially played it. Okay, well, we might be playing Ethnos tonight for wow. sure. Wow. If you're not familiar with Ethnos, it is on the board an area control game. Yes. But don't think I don't like area control because it is a set collection game. You're basically drawing cards from this display and trying to create sets or bands as they called in the game and playing these different bands. And each band, it's like there's dwarves, there's all these different fantasy sort of like classes, if you will. Yeah. And when you play a band, it allows you to take presence in one of the various territories out okay. there. Um, and there's a very push your lucky sort of feel to the game because every turn you're either taking a card from the face-up display yeah. or from the top of the deck. And the face-up display is not naturally filled back up. So it can go empty and then people are just top, top decking it. Okay. So you're trying to do this also before all three dragons in the deck that are shuffled in at various stages pop up. And once there's two dragons, everyone at the table is like, uh, okay. okay, the third dragon might come out and we might end. So do I push this to get one more dwarf on my next turn or not? It's a very exciting game. It's been forever since I've played it. Yes. So that's okay. a good reason for us to play it again. Interesting. So next up is my favorite two-player game of all time. Now, I actually, I'm just going to say ahead of time, ahead of time, the next game that is, I've only played a two-player. I'm not sure if it's a two-player-only game, but I was uh, jostling back and forth anyway because I, I actually forgot to do that part of the research. I will tell you, Air, Land, and Sea is another game I buy a, for a lot of people around Christmas time. It's just such a great, great two-player game. It, it, I will concur. Uh, I, I just, just played it for the first I, time. I just, I can't express enough that that game, I don't know, like something about easy rules, but like st strategy. You get so much strategy out of that game. It's, you know, it's 18 cards. And what's, what's happening is you have these three campaigns. You're fighting over the campaigns with these cards. But the cards have different abilities on them. They're one through six. And each one of them, based on their abilities, of course, six has no abilities and the other ones do. And you're trying to, like, flip cards over and each card positions one. But all of us, both of us have six cards and there's six cards out of the deck. So you kind of have to decide who has what. You're, you're playing a guessing game. There's a but, lot of mind games. Right. You know, and then once certain cards are revealed, you're like, uh... You know, it's like, yeah. you know, and uh, there's cards that can protect cards. And then you also have this pull out me mechanic to the game where if you're losing, you can just concede defeat because if you stay in the hand, you give away points. So there's like a lot of faking out with this 18 card game. 
Uh, highly recommend it if you're not looking for the serious war campaign. They have a like a family version, which is like p- pigs and critters yeah. and stuff fighting. I want to get. I want to play the critters yeah. version. I did play that yeah. the the original recently, and it is. It's an interesting three lane sort of card battle, yeah. if you will, with if a lot of head games. If you didn't have it, I was going to buy you one. Oh, thank you. Yeah, man. I just. Yeah, I just feel like everybody should have that game. It's a, yeah. All right, my number 48 is also a two-player game. Ah. And it is Paris, and I'm uh, using the English translation, translation, City of Lights. Okay, Paris. This is a two-player tile placement game, and the, biggest, the, the big takeaway for why I like this game is that it gives you choices on your turn. You're not just laying tiles. There's two phases, and in the first phase, you're doing one of two things. You're either taking one of the different polyomino tiles that you're going to place in phase two, or each player has these sort of like street tiles that they're putting down, which is where you're going to be able to place those building tiles. So you're going to be doing this a little bit different for, differently from the other player. And it's very interesting because you're like, oh, I really want to get that big polyomino, but can I place one more street tile? Because the street tiles dictate where you're allowed to place those tiles in phase two. Okay. Uh, have you played it? No. Is it oh, we're playing this too. Wow. We're, we're playing not, all, we're, gonna, we're, play, we're We're shutting this down. We're canceling we're just, all the rest of the I, I love. You know what's happening is, is we're going to have this happen throughout all our videos. Yeah, We're going to be in true. different pairs and stuff. And it's like, we're playing this tonight. We're not going to play all this stuff tonight. We ain't playing this all tonight. That's true. Yeah. But that's my number 48, Paris City of Lights. Um, So my next one here, and and by the way, this is going to be interesting too, because some of these games I love and I have to try to recall everything I remember about the game. Yeah. Uh, And this is one of those where I'm going to fail a little bit, and that's Caper. Uh, And Caper Europe. So Caper was one of those games back in the day where I used to give that to couples too. Like... It, it was just such a good card game. Well, I wasn't able to do that because it was never in print <laughs> anymore. <laughs> it's because it was so popular. Uh, but Caper Europe came back, and I, honestly, it's such a great game. I can't remember if it's more than two players because I've only played a two-player. Uh, I can't either, but it, yeah. it is meant mostly. But it as is a meant mostly game, as a two-player for game. Sure. What you are is you're you're basically fighting over three uh, territories. These little territories, but there's consi- a theme to your yeah. List, there's a theme all of a sudden. to the to these heists. <laughs> They're heists. You're, cri- you're different types of criminals, and you're taking yeah. these cards and you're trying to play them, whether they match in color or their types and different types of things like that. But there's something about the, the elegance of that design and the fact that they made, made that game even better by addressing some of the. Uh, there's a lot of iconography, a lot of different, like this ability, that ability. Well, they, they distilled it down and then just made a tighter game. And I. I, that's a that's a game I highly recommend, and it's uh, by the same people who did Parks. Uh, it's by the same, and, and if you love Parks, you're gonna love this type of game anyway. Like it has that just, aesthetic. Yeah, it has that aesthetic. Nice so if you like that quality it. and that presentation, yeah, Caper, very good game. Yeah, we played it on the live stream. In fact, uh, Ryan and I. I didn't watch it. You didn't? I didn't watch. He it. usually <laughs> watches and then claims yeah, Ryan. I, is I pretty cheating. much am trolling the entire time I watch these things. <laughs> so my number forty-seven is an oldie, yeah. but a goodie, uh, and it's called What's My Word. And he probably hasn't played this. I don't even know. That sounds like something that. What's my word? It sounds like something that came from like the fifties. You want to know what it's called? What's my word? What's my world today (laughs) is called Wordle, because it's effectively the same sort of thing. Okay. What's my word is a. It's from Eagle Griffin Games. Oh wow. And it's a two-player head-to-head game that is effectively sort of kind of like Wordle. Each player has a different pad, and I write my own sort of six-letter word. Or if you want to play the advanced game, it's a seven-letter word. And then the other player does the same thing. And then we go back and forth guessing words, but it's not as basic as just randomly guessing a seven-letter word. The first word you have to guess is a two-letter word. Okay. And those words are staggered underneath the player's word. So... You want to try to get the letters in the right place, but you're having to use different words to do it. Like you're not just trying to guess that word, but it's amazing how you do that. And then finally, by the end of it, if you could possibly guess the word, you're scoring lots of points. And that's how you do, that's how you win the game is you're getting points on each guess, depending on how many letters were right and how many letters were in the right place. So if I, if your word is punch and I can uh, use uh, un, if that was a word, that or or, or unch or lunch. Unch, unch. I'm gonna okay. get some points. Is for unch the, a word, letter. by the way? Unch? No, lunch. But, uh, you said unch, though. I did say I, unch. I, I'm just. I, I wanted to know if it was a word. Unch would not be allowed. Okay. In what's my word? <laughs> but you get the idea. It's a two-player, and I honestly, I actually think it's a better 
game experience than Wordle. Wow, which that has is taken a, the world. That is a very aggressive shot fired Wordle. <laughs> but that is my number forty-seven. <laughs> What's my word? All right, so my next one is Tekenu. Uh, oh, you know, I'm a fan. Of, uh, you know, I love to see these stuff. So yeah, uh, Tekenu is it really hit me. And this is where That's you'll good. start to see a lot of more of the modern games. You got to understand. By the way, when it, I should we should have. Gave a little bit of buffer of our experience. I'm going to be honest with you. Like I came in the hobby about five years ago. So a lot of the games will be seem more recent to you. And that's because of that. I have some in here that are from before then. But you will see a lot of recent games. So Canon was something that really sp- spoke to me. And it has the simple part of it all is that, is that cycle of the big, you know, big thing turning the there. The day, the obelisk turning. The dice drafting Di- too. Dice draft is good too. But like the... Just that day, night, and cycle, that kind of thing like that, where the shade of... I just thought that was so cool. Wow. Yeah, I, I really thought that was so cool. And I love games that just give you a tight amount of turns, and it's just like every decision matters. And I believe you only have 16 turns, and it's just like, how am I supposed to get this done? I mean, there's a track over here where you're trying to get these powerful cards. There's a track... There's a situation over here where you're trying to line things up that will score in different ways. Then you have like your crops yeah. and stuff like yeah. that. You're, like you you're have so many different great medium yeah. weight euros. Yeah, I know. Basically. Like this is just all the meat, but there's that middle part with these dice in the days and the night cycles that just it's like wow. That yeah. It's really smart. It's really cool. It does a cool a couple cool real, really interesting things, but yeah, it is the quintessential medium weight euro at least for the year that it came out. Yeah. Oh, why, why are you taking shots at my game? No, no. I, I love that game. I said all time. I didn't say for oh, the year I'm of sorry. 2000, I'm sorry. whatever. Well, mine might be even higher on my Yeah, list. I mean, you got you brought up a game from 1951. <laughs> I don't even know what that game is. That game even have a BGG? To be I fair, know. it was the 70s when okay. my word Okay, all right, out. all right. I was yet to be born, so there you go. <laughs> I was a, I was a late seventies baby, but I'm like seriously, it's got to be born. All right, all right. You wait and see when you play it. All right. Is, is it dusty? <laughs> it is a little it's bit. It's a dusty. Game. It is a little bit. All right. All right. Well, my number forty six is maybe we'll pass muster with you better than what's my word. I hope so. My number forty six is the voyages of Marco Polo. Oh wow. Uh, this one is a classic, and it is a dice placement game. Probably one of my earlier dice placement games. Yeah. And I'm just going to tell you the one thing about this game you need to know. When people talk about variable player powers mm-hmm. in games in general, mm-hmm. there's one game, in my opinion, that people invoke more than any other game, and it's Marco Polo. Wow, that's... Marco Polo's <laughs> variable player powers are the purest example of you looking at the power and you're like, this must Can be I do broken. This? Right, like, this I love is that. crazy. I love that and feeling. And then you hear the other players and you're like, well, that's even crazier. crazier. Yeah. You know, it's like so crazy that they're all sort of mostly balanced, right. I'll say. Yeah. Uh, but the, the one go-to I go to all the time is the guy who basically doesn't have to roll his dice at the beginning. Okay. Because everyone has to roll their dice and then you're placing those different dice and their values are important. Right. There's one guy who's like, you can place any of these dice as though they're sixes or whatever you want. T- David, can I tell you something? Yeah. I have not played Boys of Marco Polo. Well, well, I have played Boys of Marco Polo, the second one. I played, oh, the, you second, have. I played it, well, the second one. So. The second one is pretty much the okay. same one. That's actually been streamed. Okay. And I own the second one. But admission time, I have not yet played the second. Huh, so you, we need to play that tonight. No, we need to play. Well, you need to play the first. We've yeah. got a lot of games. All right, there we do. go. But let's get on to the number 45. So my next one is probably one of my favorite rolling rights. Uh, it was interesting how this one ended up on the list amongst that pub meeple thing because I did have rolling rights I have in high regard that are not on here. Uh, but Hadrian's Wall. Hadrian's Wall. Very, very For good sure. game. I've We've talked about it a lot, but it's a very busy rolling right uh, that has a lot of engine building things on it. You have two different pads. You're trying to fight off on one of the, fight the whole crew, uh, fight people off as a whole <laughs> but then you have all these different things that are uh, you're taking off the tracks and as you uh draft these cards and stuff i mean uh, the resources you're gonna have a lot of resources to play with and i think that's what it is you have physical resources you have a little bit of interaction but you got combos uh, combos it's combo delicious combo lish wow there you go i mean Combo-licious. it is uh, I mean, i'm not the yeah. first to use that well, word but right. it is uh, it is the game but that's definitely the thing it's a very rewarding game and it actually has a mini campaign and it plays well 
pretty much at every player count. That's that's the key. Like it plays well at every player count, and I really adore games that do that. The solo mode in that was really fun, and there's even a campaign for it if you want to seek that out, that's which cool. really sells the game. Yeah, that's a good game. Yeah. Is it is it better than My 45, though? Yeah. Because My 45 is another two-player game, and I found that there's a lot of two-player yeah, games on my list. Do you I have like... any more friends than, like, one friend? No, I don't. No, no, sometimes I play two-player just by myself. Friend. I go to the other side of the uh, table. Okay, wow. Now you're yeah. taking shots at solo gamers, folks. All right. Uh, no, my number 45 is Jekyll versus Hyde. Okay. Now, this, for me, is a yeah. very new game to me. I started playing this just about a year ago, maybe. Um, this is a two-player trick-taking game. I love trick-taking games. I love two-player games. And when someone can pull one off, it's that's really good. I enjoy it. Yeah. This one, I might. I think it, this is my favorite two-player exclusively trick-taking game okay. of all, all the bunch. Wow. One player's Jekyll, the other player's Hyde. One player wants wild imbalance to the tricks. The other player wants balance to the tricks. I'll let you guess which one wants which. Yeah. But you're doing that, and Hyde is basically trying to do it such that this marker moves across and effectively turns Dr. Jekyll into Mr. Hyde. Oh, okay. You play over three rounds. It is a really, really good game and has some twists to it. It's not just purely playing suits and beating one another. There's ways of changing Trump and all of that, like any good trick-taking game has to yeah. do these days. But that is my number five, Jekyll. Yeah, that, that game Hyde. sounds really interesting. I'm gonna have to put that on my want list of just random cut things to buy, games to buy, because I, I just it's I keep inexpensive. For, yeah, it's, it's very it's, inexpensive. It's, yeah, no, yeah. that's the thing, and I, that's one of those types of games where I really like it. I really adore good card games, which you will see throughout my my list. It's just like loving uh, engine building, love tableau building, love card games. But uh, moving on to mine, uh, number that, forty-four. My, mine is pretty pretty significant to me because uh, it hit me pretty hard last year, and I was waiting for it. It was on an anticipated list, kind of for a while. It's one of those games that kept. It's like, when is this coming out? And uh, it finally came out, and it blew me away. Is Maglev Metro? Oh, yeah, I, lo I absolutely love that game, and I don't like pick up and deliver games. This is my game, and basically, what you're doing is you're using these like kind of light rails. Uh, and you're building these with these nice little see-through uh, tiles there, and yeah, the you're trying to nice. you're trying to pick up and drop off uh, different like robots, and then all different types of commuters across these maps. And they have several different maps that you can do it. There's only two in the base game, but if there there was a recent Kickstarter, and they opened up that design so much, and it's everything I wanted. Like I was like this. This is all I need as far as the pickup deliver part. Like this is everything I need. They came up with all these different themes that they, they work. There's like new robots, robot one, there's London, there's a, a planet, you know, like there's just yeah, all kinds Mars of, it's long. like crazy, uh, crazy, crazy stuff, different locations, which adds a different gameplay to it, different situations and new issues to deal with. But I don't think, I, I just, that the design surprised me. That's a surprising game in my top 50. Yeah, and that game's still seeing a lot of uh, action at the cons. Like I think this, yeah. Last Origins was the first time that really got a good Yes, and, and that's another thing. It was like at PAX U last year. It was a COVID it was like a It was a COVID one. It just came at the yeah. right at the right at the wrong time. <laughs> so, yeah, I'm glad that people are finally getting a chance to play it. So my number 44 is one I like, I think, along with maybe at least tens of thousands, hundreds of thousands, okay. possibly millions. Oh wow, you know that. Okay. worldwide cuz I know it's sold really I think it well. has a 1 million sticker cuz you just you, I, I know what it is. We had it, to take a cut for it, a second it, there. It might, but it's wingspan. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Uh this game when it first came out, I played it and back when it came out, this was before yeah. the nature craze. In fact, yeah. I think maybe we can blame wingspan yeah. or credit rather. Yes. Credit wingspan with the nature craze which I enjoy. But when it came out, people were like, birds? I, and I now, remember, of course, everyone's yeah, doing Yeah, the pre-hype to that one was like, no, really not hype. What? What? Birds? But it was great. Don't worry, there's enough bird watchers out there. Love people that like birds. Trust me. Yeah, and I won't <laughs> go too much. I mean, a lot of you probably already know Wingspan, yeah. but my biggest thing that I like about this thing is the satisfaction of running those cards. Yeah. So, like, you take your turn and you're able to go down that whole row and do all the things and create these awesome combos. A lot of fun. And the components are really nice. I love the way those cards look. They always reminded me when I was a kid, there was these little card boxes you could order okay. when I was a kid that were scientific. And like you'd get like a new pack of five somethings. In okay. this case, it would be birds. It looked just like those cards. Wow. With all this little information, you know, their wingspans and all that sort of stuff. Yeah, that's, but wingspans. That's deep. 
is my number 44. My opinion on Wingspan, really... There we go. Oh, that's not a chef's kiss, by the way. <laughs> that's very different. Zipping his lips is very different than a mwah. Mine's a mwah. Uh, I mean, at right. least a 44 mwah. Here we go. My, this next game was one of the games that was part of, like, so this will give you an idea of the gauge. This was when I was newer to the hobby. Um, and this was the last in this series. It is Hoplomachus Origins. Oh. Uh, so there's Hoplomachus. There's a, I can't remember the middle net one, but this one was, I believe, the last one. And it's more of a small arena style. Because the other ones were two big presentations of the arenas. But what you're doing, and this is by Chip Theory Games. So you got these chips and you have these different warriors. And you are, they start in the middle and you're fighting, fighting them in different types of scenarios. And it's just a very 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 awesome strategic tactics like game uh, and that, that appeals to my final fantasy tactics type person yeah it's uh, the hex space fighting you you're, you're you're lining the people up to get ready in the arena and then you bring them in you bring them in slow and then you're kind of fighting stuff out and they created these different scenarios to do it it's very easy to learn but it definitely has so many layers as far as the people you're drafting you can bring in different different clans and types that have that specifically have different abilities and it's just I, I never get tired of that they have one it's called victorium that's coming out and uh strictly so i'm so excited for uh, you know for to get that game it this was the beginning of me falling in love with chip yeah this, this was, was the i beginning. was gonna that's what i was gonna this say this was the beginning this had to this been the, the beginning very beginning so my 43 it's not a chip theory game yeah my 43 is a game from a designer who i love a designer who's made a lot of games that I play. Okay. A designer who has games who will probably be further up on my list. Wow, you're going big early. Uh, but this is Space Base from John D. Clare. Space Base. Space Base is a game that, if you haven't played it, you're rolling dice and you're basically firing things off, kind of like Machi Koro ish, yeah. but better than Machi Koro in okay. a number of different ways. The big thing about this game. Uh, and this is the first game where I really identified this for John D. Clare's games in general. Okay. John D. Clare does a fantastic job of making his games such that everyone is engaged at the table yeah. all the time. Love that. Like Space Base is maybe one of the top games for that. Yeah. No one ever in Space Base is just sitting waiting. Right. There's some, because yeah. when someone's rolling the dice on their turn, everyone's getting to use some of the dot you know everyone's doing something yeah. kind of almost like a roll and write in that respect. yes it's very much like that that's actually a good yeah but that's you're nice rolling the dice and everyone i would I've, I've found myself as excited or more so on someone else's turn because of what you can fire off on other person's uh, other people's yeah. turns is different than wow. what you can fire off on your turn really good game uh there's a handful of expand at least two yeah i want to say it. two or three yeah. So, yeah, two or But three. Space Base, that is my number 43. Interesting, interesting. interesting. What's your number 42? Uh, so 42, game that I recently played that's really old. So before my time, uh, way before my time. What's my word? <laughs> who, guess who? <laughs> guess who? Boggle. Uh, <laughs> hey, Boggle's a pretty good game. It is I'm a sorry good game. for interrupting. I know. Mine is, is, is Shogun. Oh. Uh, so I just played Shogun recently. <laughs> it's absolutely amazing, but I am going to do a review of it, and I just blew the review. There you go. <laughs> I, like, I'm going to talk about it, but it's got this interesting thing where you're fighting over these uh, provinces and trying to control regions, but it's got an action selection thing where you can kind of bluff everybody out, but there's five actions that you can see and five actions you can't see. So you have an element of your deception, but then also yeah. like, I don't know what's going to happen and when, but then it kind of plays out that way. And the things that I, the thing I really love about this most is, is the people can fight you and you can fight people and you're putting uh, your cues into this tower and sometimes some will come out and some will not. Uh, so it's very interesting. Other players may come out. All these things are coming down into this thing to determine battle. It's very interesting. It seems like very ahead of its time because it feels like it could play out like it's a brand new game today. Yeah, uh, just because it has so many of these like new game elements. Well, it's like two thousand. I don't know, like early two thousand. It's, it's back there. Yeah, it's that's, back there. So that's probably the oldest game you've listed yeah, so far. Maybe. It is. What are you trying to do? I, no, I I don't play hey, ye old a, games. It's okay I don't if play ye old games. It's, no. o, it's okay if you're cult of the new man. <laughs> I'm working. I'm working on that. Uh, I'm working on that. I which, kid because I am very cult of the new. This yeah. one, my next one is not cult of the new though. I mean, once upon a time it was probably cult of the new, but it isn't now. My number 42, is it we're at, 
is Le Grand Ya. Le Grand Ya. I'm pronouncing oh, that wow. correctly now. You stand corrected, I've sir. I've done a number of videos yeah. <laughs> where I've pronounced it wrong. It's Le Grand Ya. Uh, this one is a, I would say, medium to medium plus okay. euro. All right. It has a lot of different things going on, but the biggest thing that I love about this game are the multi-use cards. And when I say multi-use cards, I mean incredibly multi-use cards. Each card has like a top part, the sides, and the bottom. I mean, all cards have that. Uh, I know. Like, I'm, wow. I was like, but this game, cards now. This game there has different things on all those <laughs> sides, and their player yeah. board is such that when you play a card, if you play it on the top, you're using just the top part of that card. So you're basically ignoring the rest of the card depending on how you play it and where you play it on your board. You're farmers with, you know, vineyards and that sort of stuff, so you're doing very Euro-y sort of things, but it's all driven by these multi-use cards and this really cool long process. That includes dice drafting, and this too is probably one of the first games I'd played with dice drafting, and yeah. that's just a part of the mechanics. Dice drafting is not the whole thing. It is just like one of the five stages every round. Unfortunately, I have not played the game, but I played the dice game. Oh, the dice game's not bad, yeah. but it is effectively yeah. kind of an abstracted roll yeah. and write version and I of it. I really would like to use that because I also love multi-use cards, which you will see. I think you'd on. like it. Yeah. Another one that we need to play. Yeah. <laughs> I mean, we only have so much time. What is so. your... This is your 41? Yeah, I oh think boy. so. Yeah, so mine is uh, Nemo's War. Nemo's War was another one of those games I played in my first year of coming back in the game. First year or two coming back in. And, uh, I mean, Nemo, right? Uh, the story of Nemo, 20,000 Leagues Under the Sea, I was, like that kind of stuff. And you're really going on an adventure. And what I remember most about that game is the sense of adventure when you play this game and the risks that you have to take. You have to make captain-like decisions and risk your crew to kind of resolve these cards. And it has these little stories in it. And you just score a ton of points trying to dodge dodge people, but also fight them if you, you, know, if you can. I, I don't know. I, I guess it's one of the best solo games, period. And they and tried, you played it solo. Yeah, actually. I just played it only solo. Don't trust me. It's not a two... two it, it can be played as a two-player game, but like three and four, no. Just no. It is a solo game. And uh, it's a great solo game. Uh, it, it may be on the expensive side, but it is worth every penny for me. I have a very different game for my 41. Oh, and wow. We'll wrap this up, and we can talk about this one a little bit. And speaking of Cult of the New, this one was pretty new for Ooh. me, I think, just last year. Okay. It was in one of my most recent top tens of the year, and it is a party game, and it is called So Clover. Oh, wow. I was hoping, I think, we, didn't, I was hoping we didn't have overlap for this one, because mine's a party game, too. I was like, Oof. I think I think you were the one that told me about So Clover yes. at first. In fact, you yes. said, before like the holidays, you said... Order it now. You yeah. get it Friday before you go to. Visit I gave your him family. a time window. You I was did. like, you could get it before you go you to your family. Get it in a day. Yeah. Get it and <laughs> get go it to now. your family. Yeah. And I did, and it was a huge hit. Uh, in this game, it's kind of like you know, games of like code names or just one yeah. or games of that ilk, but it works very differently, and it brings in a much higher level of sort of Sudoku mindset in terms of figuring out everyone's. Uh, words. You're putting these four cards on this really cool, yeah. although somewhat complicated to use uh, <laughs> yeah. component yeah. where you have these four cards and then you put clues the clovers, around it. Like you're putting them on, you're yeah. putting words on the clovers and trying to get people to match those up with the cards that you have. Yeah, and it's cooperative. So yeah. you put your clover out there and then the cards are mixed up. Yes. And people are trying to figure out how to put the cards back on your clover such that they match up with your clues the way you intended yes. for it. And this is one of those games, I've said this before, it's hard to explain why this game is good. Yeah. But when you play it, you're like, oh. Yeah, I think wow. what, what for me with this game is it, it ignites people. Like it ignites the group of people. Everybody at the table saying something, they're agreeing, they're disagreeing. Because uh, you're invested in each person's at the tables, their puzzle, their puzzle. And, you know, it's one of those games that has points, and I don't even, like, I don't even know what the points no, are. No, it is for one of those like, things where I don't you even just, care. Like, I don't you just know. go through, and just, everyone does a clover, right. like, and then you reset. Can we again. solve everybody's one? You know, like, that's all we really care about. So, yeah. Yeah, so those are our 50 through 41 titles, just for me and Jeremy. Yeah. Uh, there's probably another video up or coming soon that has Emily and Ryan's 50 to 41. And then we're going to be bouncing back and forth, like yep. I said, and culminating all of this into one massive top 10 where all four of us sit down and talk about our final 10 in our top 50. Be sure to check out all of those. If you have any questions about anything we said today, if you think we're crazy about any of the yeah. games we picked, if you have a better top 
50 through 41 than we do. What are your What are your oldest games? Jeez. Yeah. If what <laughs> If you want to defend what's my talk. word, please comment down below. <laughs> and until next time, make sure everyone has fun at the table, and we'll see you then. All right, folks. Take care.